If you found yourself trapped in a remote Alaskan town being attacked by vampires, could you escape? Well, you are wrong, and in this video I am going to go through the movie 30 Days of Night and explain exactly why you wouldn't survive. We start out following the townspeople of a place called Barrow, Alaska who are getting ready for their month-long stay in the dark. Some of the people are leaving on the last flight out until daylight comes back. In the real world it is actually 64 days without sunlight, according to Google and there is no last flight planes continue to fly throughout the month. There may be some delayed or cancelled flights due to bad weather, but there is no period of no flights. But for the sake of this video I am going to go with the premise of the movie. Our Sheriff Eben and his deputy Billy find a bunch of satellite phones and radios burned in the snow. Shortly after that someone kills all the sled dogs and destroys the town's only cell tower, effectively cutting off all communication to the outside world. The last plane has left, all the sled dogs are dead, it is too dangerous to drive to the next town over and now there is no way to call for help. Their chances at survival is looking pretty bleak. There is also no chance that they would be able to figure out that a vampire attack is coming even after our sheriff found this guy's head on a pike at the cell tower. He would probably just assume it was the crazy asshole he confronted in the diner earlier. Crazy does say. They're coming. This time they're gonna take me with them. All of me. Even after hearing that nobody is gonna say, oh shit the vampires are coming, he probably just thinks this guy is nuts and is maybe talking about a group of people not vampires, so no one is gonna have any time to prepare for the upcoming onslaught. At the Utilidor, the vampires trash the town's only helicopter. They ripped out the throttle, the rotors, have the fucking helicopter! Cut to Gus at the cell tower. I know most of you would call this guy an idiot for going to check out a noise like that, and you would be right. But given this guy's situation, it doesn't really matter if he stayed put or went outside he was completely screwed. I don't really see any way he could have possibly gotten out of this. After Eben finds Gus's head, he tells everyone who has generators to go home and stay there. Everyone who doesn't to go to the diner. Under normal circumstances, this would be fine. But for a vampire attack, it is a bad idea that is going to be one of the first places they are going to check, as it is a popular gathering area. Of course, you are not any safer in your home. We see this lady get attacked in her kitchen and dragged out of the window before her husband can get there with his shotgun. The only thing I don't get is why he took her outside. With how fast and strong these things are, he could have easily killed her in the kitchen, then killed her husband as well. Back at the station, Eben's brother shows how dumb he is, and that he should not be trusted with anything important. Luckily, Eben gets there just in time. Shithead. After this, Eben and Stella decide to go out looking for these murderers. During their excursion, they encounter their first vampire. Luckily for them, there was only one, but it manages to outrun and jump on their truck. Eben shoots him, then Stella slams on the brakes, throwing him off the truck, then they speed away. I think the only way they actually survive this encounter is due to plot armor. It was extremely lucky that there was only one of them, and it seemed to give up chasing them very easily. Stella didn't even run him over, she actually went around him. Now I know most people would think this is stupid, but I actually think it is the right call. If that thing fucked up the truck when she ran it over, and they had to walk back to the sheriff's office, that would have been a death sentence. Even if it killed that vampire, there would be a pretty good chance they would have encountered another on their walk back. So going around was probably the right choice. On their way back, they hear Helen's cry for help over the radio. <laughs> Helen! They get back to the station only to find a bunch of blood and the crazy asshole still cuffed in the cell. They didn't take me. <laughs> yeah, no shit, dude. It was pretty obvious they were just using him. So of course they were not going to take him with them. He is lucky they didn't eat him like everyone else, but honestly, they probably thought his nasty ass would taste like shit, so they just left him there. I guess they didn't forget about him after all. Once the attack commences, how long you survive is going to depend on where you are when shit goes down. If you are one of the idiots still outside running through the street, you are pretty screwed. Not that it really matters too much if you died in the initial onslaught or they find you hiding in one of the houses later. No one is leaving this town alive. A group of people make it to the diner and of course they leave the lights on even with vampires murdering everyone in a town that has had the power shut off. Luckily for them, Eben shows up and shuts the lights off before they notice. They decide for Eben and Stella to distract the vampires by driving through the middle of town. 
so that the others can sneak to a nearby house with a hidden attic that they can hide in. It is a decent plan so long as they are willing to be turned into vampire shit. They learn real quick that driving out of town is not going to work. The vampires are strong enough to grab and stop the car. We also learned earlier that they are fast enough to catch them as Stella was hauling ass when that first vampire they encountered ran and jumped on their car. They really should have been dead here but Redneck X Machina comes in clutch plowing some of the vampires off of them. Even with that though, I think they still could have got them. The vampires just sort of stand there and watch as they drive away. As I just went over, they are more than fast enough to catch this truck. They make it to the house with no issues and start discussing their vampire situation. Vampires don't exist, Jake. Yeah, I think this guy would have to disagree with you on that one. I don't think that vampires exist in the real world either, but if I saw a bunch of them ripping people to shreds, I would change my mind real f***ing quick. Their only option is to just sit tight and hope the vampires don't find them. The main problem is the vampires are searching the houses for survivors and this old man with dementia keeps making a lot of noise. He is obviously a huge liability but he is not the only one. They start fighting about what to do making a lot of noise. The only explanation I have for the vampires not hearing them is just plot armor. When Eben knocked him to the floor like that it was pretty loud and we just heard vampires ransacking a nearby house. You have to keep in mind this is just day one. They have to endure an entire month of this. Staying sane throughout this nightmare would not be easy. Eben says that they should go to the general store to get supplies then they can head to the Utilidor to wait out the rest of the month. On day seven they see this woman wandering through the street. This is obviously a trap. Eben even sees vampires on the rooftops watching her, even if they weren't so obvious about it. She is still clearly being used as bait, and there is pretty much zero chance they can save her. I guess Eben really believes in his plot armor, because here is his dumbass running around outside like he is actually going to be able to do something. Another survivor spots him and yells his name to get his attention. This should have also got the attention of the vampires, but whatever, let's see how this plays out. There is no way the other vampires would not have heard this, they were not very far away torturing that woman when this went down. I also want to mention that this guy turned just from being scratched by one of them. Eben somehow makes it back to the attic without being noticed. A little later the old man with dementia decides he wants to leave and makes a lot of noise. This is where a vampire should have burst in and killed them all. The old man says he needs to use the bathroom and sneaks out of the window. I mean, problem solved, am I right? His son Wilson sorry. knocks Stella out and runs outside to find his dad. This is actually a huge problem. If the vampires are smart, which they have shown some signs of intelligence, they could torture him for the location of the others. The old man probably could not tell the vamps where they are because of his dementia, but the son definitely could. Dad! Obviously running through town screaming dad as loud as he can while vampires are hunting them is not a good idea. They get a lucky break with a whiteout blizzard that gives them enough cover to make their way to the general store to grab some supplies. While they are looting the store, they come across a child vampire. Wanna play with me now? The entire time they are trying to kill this thing, it is screaming its head off, no pun intended. There is no way the other vampires did not hear this. It is sort of a running theme in this movie. They make a shitload of noise, and somehow the vampires hunting them never seem to hear them. Since Eben's grandmother was a bit of a pothead, they decide they are going to have Eben run to her house as a distraction so that everyone else can make their way to the sheriff's station. Eben starts screaming for them to come and get him while running to the house. I probably would have waited until I got the generator going before yelling at them, you know, just in case I could not get the generator started right away. I think more than likely they would have got him before getting in the house considering these things can run down vehicles. While the group is headed toward the sheriff's station, one of them snagged by a vamp. The rest of the group leave him, which is definitely the correct call, but I imagine it would be more than one vampire attacking our group. It is pretty convenient that they keep facing only one at a time. The leader vampire seems to realize that Eben is setting a trap for them and he ushers his lady friend to go first. He seems pissed, but if he cared that much, why didn't he send one of the others in first? I don't know, maybe they are not that smart. Eben runs out of the back door and for some reason they did not have the house surrounded. I think Eben's plot armor is making them stupid. Given the level of planning they did before attacking the town, they would definitely be smart enough to have the house surrounded. 
Eben should not have made it out of here alive. Bo says it his turn to be a distraction and decides to go out swinging with a trencher and a shotgun basically trading his life for Eben's. Yeah, if it were me, Eben would be on his own. Sorry, dude, you are the one with all the plot armor. Bo does put in some work with that trencher, though. Once he is cornered, he tries to take himself and some vampires out by igniting a box of flares. Unfortunately for him, it actually doesn't kill him, probably because it is a box of flares, not dynamite. Getting curbed stomped like that would suck for sure, but it could have been much worse. When Eben makes back to the group, Carter here lets everyone know that he got scratched by the girl from the store. What an asshole this dude wants to die and be with his family instead of turning into a vampire. He could have used himself as the diversion in place of Eben or Bo. While they are holding out in the police station, Eben notices a flashing light coming from Billy's house and they run to his house to check it out. That's pretty risky just running across the street like that, but whatever. They get inside and find that Billy had killed his family so that they would not suffer. He says he would have killed himself too, but the gun jammed. Okay, well, just clear the jam and try again. Instead of just booking it back to the station, they climb under this house for some reason. While they are under there, they see this kid walking through town covered in blood. Obviously, this is a trap. There is no way that kid could have survived this long on his own, but Stella runs and grabs him anyways. Wouldn't you know it, there is a vampire following close behind. Of course, in reality, there would be more than one. Eben is going to distract him so that Stella and Billy can get away. Eben and Billy make it back to the Udalador, and Billy didn't realize he was being followed by a vampire. They are once again lucky that only one vampire attacked them. They managed to kill it, but at the cost of Billy's life. Honestly, trading one for one is the best they could have hoped for in this situation. Given how strong and fast these things are, it's pretty unlikely they would have been able to take this thing on. At least some of them would have gotten scratched or bitten, and unless you want to turn into one of these things, that's pretty much a death sentence. Stella was not able to make it to the Udalador, and had to hide under a car. With only one day until the polar night ends, Eben tells her to stay put and they can watch the sunrise together. Unfortunately for her, the vampires have other plans. They flood the streets with oil and set the entire town on fire. Well, that sucks for her, at least we can just wait it out here. Oh no, he has to go play hero and decides to inject himself with Billy's infected blood and go fight the vampires. This is a really bad idea. There was no guarantee that the vampires would give him a fair 1v1. They could have just ripped him to pieces the moment they saw him. But of course he gets his final showdown with the Alpha. That was badass and all but the only reason he won this fight is because the Alpha was toying around with him too much. Also, this doesn't change anything the other vampires should have killed him and made sure all the evidence of their existence was destroyed. After the vampires leave, Eben and Stella decide to go and watch the sunrise together, which is actually pretty dumb if you want to tell the world vampires are real so the government can hunt down and kill the remaining vampires. Having one alive to show them would really help out with that. Since they turn to ash in the sunlight, there are not going to be anything to show them, and getting them to believe their story is going to be pretty difficult. But what do you guys think? Could you have survived 30 days of night? Let me know down below, and if you made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Also, let me know what movie you would like to see next down below. And remember, never be the slowest member of a group.